Hoi there, it's Skyward Shield. Welcome to week 15 of Football Talks. I am joined by Bill. Say hello, Bill. Hey, oh my god, what is up? Alright, week 14 is in the books. Uh, it, went, it went about, in terms of my pick record, it went good. But in terms of, of the teams, they did bad. Uh, would you yeah. say so, Bill? I think I so. Would I would agree. I would agree. <laughs> Let's start with the one who, well... I don't know why I keep putting stock in them of maybe at least going eight and eight or seven and nine. The Detroit Lions. It looks uh, simple. Beat a bad and broken Rams team who is falling apart almost as quickly as you are, and everything will be will be square. No, it yep. doesn't go that way. Todd Gurley woke up again and just outran everybody. Had his way with him, and Case Keenum struck. Uh, it was a it was a horrible mess. 21-14. The only good thing to come out of this Lions game if you were a fantasy guy and had Golden Tate on your team who got both touchdowns. Yeah. But I mean, oh. ugh. So Bill, what can you say about what can you say about this game? Okay, so uh, I'll just put it this way. The Lions defense still kept them in the game. They still kept them in the game, but the offense the offense is woefully woefully ill prepared ill suited uh and according to the pro football power uh, the the index that is uh measures players uh performance the offensive line the center uh swanson is performing just as bad is Dominic Rayola. And, oh, I, I just when you think you get rid of one useless waste of space on the offensive line, you get it replaced by another useless waste of space on the offensive line. We need a true center for the Detroit Lions because our center situation is a woeful mess. It's it's affecting the entire offensive line. Uh, I mean, the offensive line itself has been mediocre at best, terrible at its worst. I mean, horrifically terrible. But this this week, that offensive line just could not do anything. They couldn't block for Stafford. So, Bill, here's a question. I keep bringing it up. But do you still think that their number one draft concern should be a cornerback? Because I think so too. But that center starting to become a real pain. I mean, I'm I'm done. Put it this way: you can find a lot of good offensive line help in the second, third rounds. So I would like a playmaking corner, sort of like a uh, a Justin Morgan or a Josh Morgan. I forget his Josh name. Josh Norman. Yeah, Josh Norman, yes. I always get Morgan. I don't know why. But yeah. Josh Norman. I want a Josh Norman, Richard Sherman type if that's available. And if that's not available, I'll be cool with a corner, but I could I would be I would be accepting of an offensive lineman that isn't going to be a project. Uh let's let's start building an offensive line to protect Matt Stafford, protect that arm, and let's let's be a explosive offense in the future. Mm. So that is that is my main takeaway from this week's game is how woefully inept and terrible the offensive line is, and how great our defense still is without Nadamikin Sue. They they expected the Lions to just fold up shop on defense. And they held a team in check with an explosive, a couple explosive players in Todd Gurley and Case Keenum to only 21 points. It could have been a lot worse. Case Keenum didn't have much yards, only 124 yards, but that's about what you expect when you want to run the ball for about 60 to 70 percent of your plays. I mean, Todd Gurley, Todd Gurley's a beast. I really want him he to get the MVP award, and I think he might now, because I, I think we could safely eliminate 
the uh, Buccaneers, who are not mathematically out, but it's very likely out considering Minnesota and um, Seattle likely to win one or two games. That's all they need to really get in. Oh, yeah. I mean, really, they're not winning the South, and their only hope is the playoffs. Uh, is playoffs? The wild card. Playoffs? You talking about playoffs? Uh, playoffs? Don't talk about playoffs. <laughs> <laughs> they're definitely not getting in. Oh man, they're totally not getting in. And I, I'll never. Every every day of the week, I could go and watch that freaking video and still laugh. Yeah. <clears throat> so uh, yeah, I'm like, I want to see more of Case Keenum doing doing wonders. And it's okay if they get a new coach because it's fine. This is. He might need somebody who can work with his style of play and just be the gunslinger, but the gunslinger won't be needing to use his gun if Todd Gurley just runs all over teams anyway. But it'll it'll at least yeah. make open for when he does need to throw the ball because they're all prepared and, for Gurley. And according to Ian Rappaport, uh, it's looking likely that Jeff Fisher will stay with the St. Louis Rams. Oh, they don't, I don't know what to expect out of them. Yeah, you don't know what to expect, but I, I... Jeff Fisher's a good coach. This team just, every year, they somehow get that one injury, that one injury that affects their team in the most negative way possible. Uh, honestly, know? the way I see it, it's just... Sure, Todd Gurley's great, but when he has those games where he's not, you know, out like running everybody, I mean, sure, even Adrian Peterson has those games. He's had a couple of those games, like the first one, he didn't do much, but and that's why the Vikings lost the first game. But they, well, you need they need someone else to step up in the absence of the other guy. That's why I think as I've said, um, the um, I said this about the Raiders, which. I don't know if it's no longer the case because their line has been working well because they've always been together. But um, with the Rams, I've I've said they are just a wide receiver threat and an offensive lineman or two away from being a solid team. They could probably help yep. any quarterback get better. It seems with the addition of Amari Cooper, who has been slowing down as of late for the Raiders, the Rams, like you're seeing the opposite side for the Rams, who need a wide receiver threat. Otherwise, you could just blitz the Rams all day, and they're fine. You'll be fine because those quarterbacks aren't going to do much because their lines are. The line is not good. The line is trash. I don't know if it's the worst in the league, but yeah, the Rams just need an offensive lineman to, or two to protect um, Case Keenum, especially after the whole concussion shit. Which, oh god, I I I don't know if what Case could do about it. I'm pretty sure the Rams are going to get fined for that, or at least Jeff Fisher. Because, you know, you oh, knew he yeah. was concussed. You need to take him out for at least one play. Oh, yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, anyway, I, I, I'm, I'm only neutral on the Rams now because I like Case Keenum. That's because he was formerly in Houston. Wish he were back, but fine. But, <laughs> but, but anyway, Bill, I don't have much to say else on this game. This, I've Overall, seen some of the highlights, but, yeah, what? Overall, it was really a lackluster game. It was, it was, it was one of those eh, games. You know, it was a. Eh. <laughs> yep. It wasn't. It wasn't really. Except for a few big plays, it was really. It was really slow. It was a really slow defensive struggle. It was the Todd Gurley show. Yeah. But anyway. Yeah. It was a showcase no. for Gurley. Anyway. Let's talk about the next game. I honestly don't want to spend too much time on this one because I just, ugh. Dallas Cowboys <laughs> had at least two or three chances to put up points, but they didn't. The first chance, interception in the, at the end zone. Horrible throw by uh, Matt Castle. Dez couldn't even catch it, even though I think he might have been able to if he just were a second aware of it, more aware of it. Just, wow. And it, it just set the tone. That set the tone. Dallas was so close, and honestly, if they scored on every ch chance they had, well, where they were in in the position of scoring, they might have been able to keep the game interesting. But regardless, it w it looks like a slaughter. It could have been, it, but it could have been closer, as which summarizes the Dallas season, ironically, 
always within the grass, but just finds ways not to get in. And also, Dez didn't make a catch that we thought was a catch. Again, they of course, it seems they have to do that. The NFL's good at orchestrating this shit. As the Cowboys fall 28-7, to just wow. The Packers, everyone's saying, oh, they've, we, they've rewoken. Watch out, NFC. The Packers are coming back. No, they're not. It's because they leaned no, on the run game not. to mask their troubles. The what? They... They, the Packers are in big trouble. They are going to get eliminated in the first round. They are, really? You think the Vikings will beat them? Because it's very well looking that way. If it were Seattle, which I'd love to see, I want to see Seattle just m punish the Packers and get revenge. That, that might be that might be a s Sunday night football game in Week 17, Minnesota against Green Bay for the division. They, yeah, but I don't know. I... Bill, I already told you which. Uh, let's. I want to save that for the for the play, our playoff prediction part, but yeah. let let's. I'll just get it out of the way. I've always said Al and Chris, the announcers for Sunday Night Football, they love the NFC East, and you know their rule. They like to get games that have one team goes in and the other goes home. Remember for the past few years where Dallas went eight and eight and could have nearly gotten in. They always had Dallas at the end. I mean. They're gonna if, if do that's very, that's very possibly what could happen. I just no, it's not I, gonna be I, Washington at at Dallas. No way, because Dallas. Let's be honest, they're out. They're out. There's no way Washington, Philly, and the, the Giants are gonna lose every single game they're in because it's mathematically impossible. Washington and Philly play each other next Saturday on the, on the day after Christmas, and then the, of course the final weeks are all division games, but. So yeah, there I could safely eliminate Dallas from the playoffs unless they somehow get the Jets and the Bills when they just don't then they drop they drop a game and lay an egg, which they both are in no position to lay an egg, especially the Jets. Buffalo I can eliminate from the playoffs. The Jets are in it to the very end. Sorry, I know we're getting to playoff stuff early, but yeah, let's just eliminate Dallas, but anyway, my point is the final week is New or Philadelphia at New York. I guarantee you, I'm like 80% certain that's going to be the Sunday Night Football game. Unless Washington wins their couple next couple of games, because Washington just needs to win one or two of these as well as their final one, and they're in. And I don't want to see Jake Rudin all, hey, we made the playoffs, guys. See, Kirk Cousins is the answer, which nothing against Kirk Cousins. I think he's a good quarterback when he wants to be. But I don't like Jake Gruden, Bill. Just don't. He's not a Jim Jim Schwartz to me. He's not the Jim Schwartz to me, though. You already know who that is. <laughs> yep. But anyway, that's that, that's Patton. Fuck Patton. But well, I want to talk Manziel later. But anyway, yeah. Sorry about that, Bill. What were you trying to say? Something. Uh, basically, I, this game just masks the issues for Green Bay, and it gives the fans of. Green Bay Packers fans everywhere false sense of hope and security that they're turning it around. And the reason I'm saying that is that the offense played well against a defense that is not up to snuff. The, the, the secondary of the Cowboys is the worst part. And if Dallas had a better secondary – they would have done it. They would have done the exact same thing that Detroit did. They would have done the exact same thing that every other team's been doing to the Packers, covering those wide receivers very. Easily. I don't think they could, even if they tried. Plus, even though they draft, they did. Dallas and Houston both drafted a, a, a cornerback in the draft first round, which I was glad for both because Kevin Johnson, though he's having trouble now, it's because good quarterbacks like to pick on the young player. Yeah, it just makes yeah. sense. But what the but for Dallas, unlike Kevin Johnson, who's already said this guy's NFL. Everyone says this guy's been NFL ready, which means he's been the best cornerback. He's silently a good, silently making a case for defensive rookie of the year, which that's not happening. I don't see that happening. I can't even think who could take it, take that. But he will be mentioned a couple of times. Uh, this guy, this other guy, I don't even know his name. I forgot it. I've, he's had to start some games, but it's Dallas not letting him play. 
They've had to let him play when injuries show up. But honestly, it's him. And then there's one other player. I swear, when I first heard him, I thought, okay, he'll be okay and he'll get better. But now every time I hear his name, I'm like, oh, I don't want him here anymore. I'm talking <laughs> J.J. Wilcox. He keeps drawing oh. flags on himself, man. Yep, yep. It's, it's, and that's another issue. It's just, no. Why do you keep doing this? You could stop, we could, like, especially during times where they could stop the Packers or any team and make them go through and out or something, but nope. You have to draw the flags. They're various kinds, but, so I won't bother listing them all. I'll put, I'll put it this way. The last thing about Dallas Green Bay I want to highlight is just just how quickly Aaron Rodgers was throwing the football and getting it out of his hands. I mean, he's not having a great season this year. He well, yeah, he lost Jordy Nelson. Season. Everyone's like, oh, it's fine. They can get win just without him. Oh, they can win some games, but can they win a playoff game? That's not what people are They're saying. Of course, I knew the Packers would get a winning season, even though I don't want them to. I'd love them to go, like, 2-14, and 14, but that ain't happening. Unless Aaron Rodgers was out for the season. Then, yes, it would, but I'm saying with Aaron Rodgers. The shut up about the GOAT quarterback thing, but yeah. yeah. What you're saying about their weakness is true. It's just, and plus, I, it's obvious how do you stop Pat, the, you stop Rodgers. You, you push down the middle because he needs, like I've been saying, he needs to take that step forward to throw a good pass. If you force him to throw, like especially when going backwards, he's not as accurate. He'll either overthrow or underthrow. And and here's the other issue, is Matt Castle also masked the problems of the Packers' defense. The Packers' defense is absolutely trash. <laughs> it is really bad. And Matt Castle is nowhere near Tony Romo. Tony Romo is in a league all his own compared to every other quarterback on that roster. That just goes to prove how much the Dallas Cowboys need and have to have Tony Romo to succeed because Tony Romo, he would have picked apart the Green Bay Packers defense very easily. That the the differences are this. You know, the Dallas Cowboys were having troubles rushing the football. They they don't have a quarterback to throw the football, so Green Bay could key on the running game of Dallas. Every team's keying in on the running game of Dallas, so they're trying to throw the football a lot, which is forcing the offensive line to do what all offensive lines are not good at doing, and that's pass blocking consistently and constantly. And Matt Castle's throwing the football more times than he needs to be throwing because of that. Yeah. But um, I was going to say... So, yeah, I don't know. I don't think the Packers are going to... Well, it depends. If they play the Vikings in the playoffs... <laughs> oh, yes, they will. This is a division team. I know they can they can knock them on their asses. But if they play Seattle, which I'd, I'd much rather love to see. So, in order for that to happen, Bill, in terms of the playoff predictor, you would need the Seahawks, of course, to lose to the Cardinals, but also the Rams, because I don't see them beating the Browns. Yeah. Or losing to the Browns, but it would count too. But honestly, you have to hope for the Rams or the Browns to assist you in that. But um, anyway, yeah. If they play the Seahawks, who are playing out of their minds now, I don't see that happening anymore. I just don't. But, again, we'll see. Either way, the Packers, yeah, everyone's praising them, of course, because they love Aaron Rodgers. They love sucking his dick, but... I just, come playoff time, he's going to lay an egg, especially if he goes up against Arizona or Carolina, which I'd love to see either or. Just, oh, it would be so fun seeing him get just brutal, brutally tenderized like a joke. But anyway, let's move on to another game. This game, technically, I, I couldn't have gotten a, 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 we couldn't have gotten a bad week where all of our teams lost because two played each other. New England just woke up again and just stomped Houston on Battle Red Day. I swear, I don't I like the red uniforms, but why do they choose to wear them against the good teams? Because they seem to drop them all the they they always lose these games with the red shirts on. But anyway, it was it wasn't even a contest. Twenty seven to six. It was pretty much 
And I love how Al and Chris pointed it out. Houston's a wannabe of New England. A lot of former New England coaches, staff, and players. And Brian Hoyer just, oh God, he could not have been more of a Brian Hoyer like I thought he'd be. He also, <laughs> admittedly, there were a couple of passes that I don't think were his fault, and those were those two or three big throws to to Ryan Griffin, which had he caught them, those would have been big plays. Those I'm talking, those were at least 20 yards or more. But Ryan Griffin let go, and he's supposed to be our best tight end, which nothing against him because Brian Hoyer is a bad quarterback, but... He actually got concussed. He's confirmed out for the next game against Indianapolis, but honestly, I, it's fine. Everyone's like, oh, no, they need Hoyer. We need Hoyer because Yates isn't a good quarterback. But I'll talk about that later. But, yeah, Texans didn't do much on offense. However, I will say, Whitney or Whitney Merciless got a sack, but it wasn't, it wasn't just him. Watt couldn't do much because his arm was broke. But yep. Jadavian Clowney, after getting like a couple of sacks for the past couple of weeks, just swarmed over Tom Brady. Double team, no problem. He'll go around them. Oh no, I will push a, a rookie offensive lineman on his ass and just demolish Tom Brady. He got to him twice. Yep. One of them, nobody even blocked him. Which it was is never a good idea. <laughs> why would you? Why would you? So basically, in the absence of, we're getting like a JJ Watt at basically seventy-five percent, which is still good. But having Clowney now com- woken up, I think the defense will be fine. Oh yeah, Beca- the def- the defense is more than fine. The defense is uh, after that after that shellacking that one week that they took. They woke up and now they're here to play and they're not here to lose anymore. They're they they're they're out for blood. Yep. Honestly, I have the uh, the Texans winning out. And you know what would be fun if if and this is not a good type of thing. What if if Yates stayed the starter and if the playoffs went in a certain way? You remember how I said the Broncos. One of the teams, the Broncos or the Bengals, we talked about this before the call, the, before we started recording, how the Broncos and the Bengals, at least one of them will clinch their divisions because they have to play each other, and they really only need one more win. So, yep. what if the Bengals were a wild card team and had to go play in Houston, and Yates was the starter? <laughs> Bengal killer, the Bengal killer is going to come out, they're going to bench Hoyer and say, you know, we're going to start TG Yates for this game. And he kills the Bengals. Because, oh, man. Because TJ Yates is forever in Cincinnati lore as the, the biggest sworn enemy of Cincinnati since I don't know who. But that oh, that geez. would be fun, but that won't happen. It's very, it's mathematically unlikely, but just the thought. But, yeah. But yeah, uh, here's my, here is my problem with this game. Why would you target Hopkins three times? Which, we didn't mention this, Bill, I forgot about this. Dez was only t- got had only one catch, two other targets, so three targets, one catch for nine yards. Yeah. Dez was pissed. I mean, Just, wow. That's again, how you lose we, games. You don't you don't feed your your best player. And part of it is is that you gotta stay within your offense. And I know that I know everyone would want to scream at the. At the uh, at the castle or any of them, like you're not throwing it at blah blah blah, you know, Dez or DeAndre. But you gotta stay in your offense. But here's the thing: you got to throw if you have the best wide receivers in the game. If you have Calvin, if you got DeAndre, if you got if you got Dez, if you got AJ Green, if you got Odell Beckham, you throw the football in their general direction and they'll make the impossible possible. Antonio Brown, just get them the football. They will find their way to the end zone somehow. Yeah. Actually, here's something interesting. Um the reason why the Giants have won a couple of the games is because they just top frag throw to Odell Beckham all the time, and that's what's been helping them. But exactly. 
here's the thing. If I see them, when they have to play a better defense, which I, if the Giants win, they are likely going to have to play at the Seahawks. I can assure you Richard Sherman will not make that mistake of leaving uh, Odell Beckham open. He will not, and he will shut him down. And Odell Beckham will be about as angry as Dez, which would, need, would make me happy. You need to double-team Odell Beckham. That's period. Honestly, uh, unless you have a top corner like Patterson or Sherman, then yeah, you're right. I, I, even with Sherman, I would, I would even, you want to, I would, I would double team him all day long. I, I, I'm because, just oh. because all the other Giants receivers don't scare you. Oh, the, they don't scare the rest, me at all. The jokes. The Ruben, you have Ruben Randall. I mean, you have William Ty at tight end. I mean, you can get away with double teaming Odell Beckham. Yeah. Make sure that he doesn't beat you because if he beats you then the Giants beat you. Yep. But that's the only reason why they've been winning. Well, same could be said with Pittsburgh, but I think Antonio Brown is much better than Beckham. But back to Houston and Here's to they... the here's to the Patriots credit. They did something I I would think other defensive coordinators would scoff at the thought at first glance. They put their best one, their best corner, Mike Malcolm Butler, on Nate Washington, the number two guy, while they had their number two corner and a safety double covering, um, double covering Hopkins. I think that's smart because okay, you have two people who can equivalent to Butler, and of course it's two bodies, so it's harder to catch a ball. But you have your best guy on the other one who could, who would would have had to step up and become the threat, which Nate Washington deep beat. Uh, did beat um, Malcolm Butler once for one big throw, but there was another one that he that Brian Hoyer missed because remember what I said, he's a bad quarterback. And yeah, that's honestly been the problem with their offense for that week. Too many missed throws. Some of them were not Hoyer's fault, I'll admit. Like a couple of them to Ryan Griffin, he could have caught them, but he just let it go after he hit the ground. Yep. But oh boy, yep. So honestly, Bill. How do you see Houston now? Because t how, do I, oh, how do you see what they're going to do? Where, where do you see them I, going? I I see them going to the playoffs because they're the best team in that division. Somebody has to win. It's like the it's the same with the NFCs. Someone has to win. Oh, these the, these AFC wildcard teams who clearly deserve to go into like the Jets or the Chiefs or the Steelers, like all three of them deserve to go in. No, one of them can't go because Houston or Indy, some one of these scrubs has to get in. I mean, and that's and that's one of the reasons why I I foresee eventually the NFL going to an eight team on each side playoff format. Yeah, and it won't have a division crown like the NBA doesn't have a crown. Oh, you can win it, but no, it's nothing special. Well, well they. Well, they would have a division crown, but... It doesn't get you in the playoffs, especially if the whole division's trash and the other t divisions I mean, are great. It would get it would get more teams that are actually really good into the playoffs. Yeah. Uh, I mean, and and really, the more teams in the playoffs, the more people, the more fans are going to the stands, the more people that are buying merchandise, the more people that are watching on television. Yeah. But, um, any, anyway, so, yeah, Houston's biggest problem, not targeting Hopkins, but as I know from TJ8 said, I'm going to throw the ball to Hopkins. He, he, it's better that way. I mean, you throw it to him, he's got a 50-50 shot. And, of course, these next couple of weeks, what defenses are you going to go up against? Let's see, the Colts, who are battered and broken, the Titans, who have been the least talented team in the NFL, and the Jaguars, which... Granted, their corner, the one that was against Hopkins, was really close in his in his face, which they people compared him to the other great corners right now, which he might very well develop into one, but honestly, remember, Hopkins won at some point, which will probably end the same way. You can contain Hopkins, but you can't p contain him for all four quarters. Hoyer's problem was he just didn't want to target him. He wanted to target Ryan Griffin and Nate Washington, which obviously didn't work. And here's another thing. Bill O'Brien, I swear, why did you call the the Wildcat twice? New England, 
is prepared for that, and you can't fool New England with trick plays. You just can't. Don't do it. Pretty much to every other team playing New England, here's advice from this game. Don't play trick plays on them. It won't work. They know. They'll catch on. They're not idiots. And the other thing is, is he took it from old school Miami Dolphins playbook where the Dolphins came out week one and ran the Wildcat constantly on New England and torched them and, you know, beat New England with the Wildcat. Because that was a new thing that no one had ever seen. Guess what? That was six years ago. That's done. It's been over and done with for a very long time. <laughs> it's, it's not working anymore. Move on to something else. Try it again but, next year when everyone's forgotten about it, basically. Because every other team's going to see that. Okay, this is how we stop the Wildcat. But the best thing huh. about uh, New England... And here's here's the thing, is New England, just by virtue of doing basically almost nothing, you know, basically won their division again. Yep. And here's the here's a, here's a sucky part. Sure, you got Gronk back, which he tore it up, but that's Gronk yep. for you. Who's, why would you stack Quinton Demps, a safety, against him? You need a corner. Honestly, you have to double cover him because it's just him, Amendola, and LaFell. And oh, and Keyshawn Martin didn't get two touchdowns against this former team. He got one. That was the first one. Which, good, I expected that. I thought he was going to get two touchdowns to humiliate his former team, but alas, it's fine. But, but, guess but who, yeah, guess they who? lost somebody. Oh, who, you could say yeah, who. Uh, well, uh, they lost LeGarrette Blunt for the season. And the, but. Oh. They are also getting Edelman back. He's been practicing. I don't expect him to play until the final week, but if, honestly, if they know they've won their division and they have a first-round bye, which, put it this way, if the Bengals and the, and the Broncos drop one more game and the Patriots win their next two, which, looking at their schedule, they play the Titans and then the, the Jets and the Dolphins, they can very well win two of those and, get, and punch their ticket in. Yep. And they'll have home field advantage and a bye. So it's fine. They're fine. And then they won't even need to start. They won't start Edelman on week 17 if they know they have home field advantage. They'll right. they'll let him rest. So And, of course, they'll get him ready for whoever goes up to, to, um, whoever goes up to Gillette Stadium to get slaughtered, basically. <laughs> which I predict will be... It could be it could be Houston if three and four seeds in my version move on. Oh in my version it is the Chiefs that are gonna go to New England, which actually is not a bet uh, not a good thing because the Chiefs have had the Patriots number a couple of times, so yeah. But anyway, and Bill. The... Um So here's the thing. Their defense is playing better. Some say it's even better than the 2004 defense, which has been considered the best of the Belichick era, apparently. Not that I know. I, I wouldn't know. Right. But um, uh, what do you think, Bill? How do you think their defense has been doing? Because they're doing great. Overall, their defense, I mean, I think it's been doing okay. It's, do, it's doing what a typical Belichick defense does. Bend it. Uh, they're bending, but they're not breaking. And when they get to the red zone, they they make the opponent settle for field goals. And you got you got a Hall of Fame quarterback. You got a, you got a great kicker yourself. You're always in the game. Yep. So I mean, as long as you're holding them to field goals, who cares? Let them score field goals. That's what Houston did. They got only two field goals, 27 to six. Honestly, they could have gotten a touchdown. But you know, oh, yeah. you know Hoyer's problem. Not a good quarterback. But yeah, of course, Fair. Bill O'Brien still got the man crush. So seriously, Hoyer would need to bomb every game. I'm talking like against the Chiefs, which that's what I'm hoping for in the playoffs to say, nope, this guy's not good. Honestly, it would take the owner to just and the GM together to say, dude, you have we have to draft a quarterback. That's what we're gonna do. So they give need, up on Hoyer. They need a quarterback. Yep, they, they still need do. A quarterback. Honestly, if I could list to you their needs, they need a right tackle because oh god, Derek Noon, what the fuck were you doing not blocking 
um, Ninkovich and I forget who the other guy was. Just wow. She- Not Jamie Collins. I would know it was him. Jamie yeah. Collins was actually doing more. Um, he was doing more um, covering than he was um, rushing the quarterback. Yep. So, yeah, seriously, on the list of needs right now, I see quarterback, right tackle, and I've had one more. It might, depending on if they keep Cushing or not, a linebacker or a safety. That's Those are my needs, but honestly, I hope they get a quarterback. No defense, please. But anyway, so I don't know if there's anything else you want to talk about, Bill, because, I, I mean, what else can you say about the Patriots? They find ways to win, and they just humiliated Houston. I would have much I mean, rather have that humiliation be on Philadelphia, if you don't mind me being honest. <laughs> if, I mean, I think the Houston Texans ran into the Patriots at the very wrong time. After they had lost two straight games, the Patriots were focused, and they were ready to t- exact uh, retribution on a team, and there comes the Texans into their own building, and the Patriots are mad. And yeah. They they just they they just laid the woodshed to them. Yep. It could have been a lot worse, in my opinion. Yeah. It could have been. Honestly. Way worse. It, I'll be honest. If Gronk weren't in this game, it might have been a little closer. It might have been, I don't know, fourteen to six. If that if yeah. that's possible, like I wouldn't remember they got a touchdown by Gronk, which I think anyone could have gotten that touchdown. But it's those big plays I'm talking about. But yeah, yeah. anyway, I think that's all we need to talk about with this with this game. Just uh, Houston, shame on you, but Patriots back on track. To them, it's like on to um, not on to Cincinnati. It's on to Tennessee. Which oh, that's easy. Just beat the scrub <laughs> of a rookie, and there you go. Anyway, Bill. Any other games to note for this week? Um, really, the the big... It's more of the injury situation in the NFL itself. Oh, it's, yeah, it's, uh, it's horrible. Obviously, uh, Andy Dalton... <laughs> Andy Dalton! He, to be fair, throw- it, it's kind of his fault for doing that, you know? He throws an interception... And then what do I need to go do? Oh, let's try to tackle and jam my thumb into the ground and, you know, tear some ligaments in my thumb on my throwing hand. So that way I can't... They have I to get a bye week now. That's the that's the problem. You're asking too much now. Had they have and, been in the driver's seat and not dropped a couple of games, like, like he, the Houston game, which I'm glad they did, but had they won games like that where they were very much in it, they would have had a buy at least secured at this point because the Broncos clearly aren't likely to get it if for if the some, Bengals for, were playing better. The, the the Andy Dalton injury is his own fault. He should have never tried to tackle like that. But I mean, just look at the NFL. Look at the injuries. Yeah. I mean, good God. We men- the, we just mentioned Legarrette Blunt out for the season with a hip injury. Yeah. I mean, it just the injuries are piling up and my 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 favorite topic to talk about is and here's the last thing of of my notes is the Miami Dolphins being the woeful poor defensive team that they are. They sign the Dominican Sue. Oh, they're going to go to the playoffs. He's in warm weather. He loves warm weather. Not going to the playoffs. And I enjoy it. I, I'm sorry. I, ju- I just really, really enjoy that the Dolphins are not making the playoffs again. And uh, just... I I I'm I was so sick and tired of hearing about how the Dolphins were going to be the best team in the AFC East. It's like really the Dolphins are going to be the best team in the AFC East. They were the most overrated team of the AFC East and they got proved why they were the most overrated team in the AFC East when the New York Giants who 
by no stretch of the imagination are a good team, just threw the football all over their defense. Yeah. But um, I was going to say, that reminded me of something. There was a tweet I saw about this. Somebody retweeted it. But it was it wasn't retweeted it wasn't tweeted like on the day of this game. It was like hundred or so days ago. It was some uh let me see if I can find it. It's around here. It was basically saying, um Oh, the the Dolphins are totally going to the playoffs. <laughs> I wanna find it now. I need to find it. It's here. Somewhere. it's gonna bother me oh, if I don't man. see it, but yeah. Oh, yeah. Dolphins still win in the division 105 days ago. That's when it was yeah. tweeted. Just, Oh, famous <laughs> last words. And, and as they are currently what? what they're, they're currently... They're currently... 5-8? They're currently 5-8? and eight. Yeah, they're, they're, they're totally going to the playoffs. <laughs> Somebody is. I would have loved a 6-10 and 10 team to get in, but... I don't uh, think it's mathematically possible anymore. It's not It's not possible anymore. Too many teams won when they weren't supposed to win. Yeah, like we picked against every NFC East team, and only one of them came three. true. Yeah, three of the four won. It's like, what's the matter with the NFC East? They're just trying to do it to prove us wrong. The, uh, they just. But like I, I don't expect them to beat Seattle or Minnesota, whoever rolls into their town. They're dead. Oh, no. <laughs> but um anyway, some games I'd like to make a note of. First, the um the, the first the, the the Browns because I'm not I'm not talking about how much I hate Pettin. He's still my worst coach of the year. He's already right. he still has that no matter what he does, but Johnny <laughs> Manziel just oh man, I love I want him to play very well just to make just for Browns fans to be like to get not upset at him. Not upset at him. They are not upset at him. They want him to play. And just keep, despite w winning a couple of games, because they could win one or two, but they already won one. I think that's it, honestly. But I want them to just call for Petten's job still. And they're like, oh, Manziel's doing great. But it's like, no, we don't want you, because you want any excuse to bench him for someone like uh, Austin Davis. I think that was his name. The other guy. You know who I'm talking about, right? Yeah, Austin. Yeah, Austin. You want you don't want you don't want, you want him to play over Manziel, and you're a fucking idiot. I want him out. I want him out of Cleveland. Put a coach that will better fit Manziel and will not, you know, will not bench him for ten games at every turn. I mean, here's the other thing: Did they ever do the exact same thing to Broadway Joe Namath? They didn't do the same thing to Joe Namath in the '60s. He drank. He did everything that he wasn't supposed to do in the 60s. Yeah. they and actually. guess what? He wants the sad part. They, they asked him that. And he's like, "That's so, they're so stupid for thinking that. Like, he commented about that. And he, he shamed the Browns for saying that's a stupid thing for them to do. And the good. For all good. Like, yeah. Sure, it's drinking. I mean, it's, as long as he's not hurting people and he's actually, you know, taking the proper precautions like not dry, drinking and driving... Because that's a crime. Exactly. That's a crime, and you go to jail for that. Yeah. And then the, yeah. that's out of the NFL's control, and by all means, suspend him. You commit a crime. But if he's just drinking at a party and he's not doing anything bad, let him. I mean, a lot of a lot of players have drinking problems as it is in the league. It's not just Johnny Manzo. Yeah, no. And for the record, I'm not trying to condone over drink like drinking too much. Not at all. Oh I, yeah, yeah put that PSA out there. But I mean, for God's sakes, every time Dez does something, like remember when they played London, oh, Dez went out late at night, guys. What are we going to do? But you're like, oh, it's just Dez and the Cowboys, you know. It's like it's like normal for Dallas, but because Cleveland barely apparently does anything, even though their coach is shit. Every time Manziel does something, oh, it's a big deal. Suspend him. Fire. Get rid of him. Which, honestly, go ahead and get rid of him so Houston or Dallas and, can pick him up. And here's the thing. The Cleveland fans don't want them to get rid of him. It's... They deserve hope. Honestly, you know how I've said how the Ravens have I felt have have served their punishment long more longer than they should have. They don't deserve to be to be losing every player they've had. Honestly, at the rate they're going, they're gonna lose everyone in their original roster. If that's even possible. I mean. 
I mean, overall, the Browns need to keep the most dynamic players that they have. They have a dynamic player in Johnny Manziel. Keep him. You can use him and you can win with him. Just you got to give him a chance. By starting Josh McCowan over him? Are you kidding me? Josh McCowan, he's a McCowan. You don't start McCowan's over anyone, ever. It's <laughs> Josh McCown. It's over for him. Well, honestly, I think it's still over for for Petten, which go for it. I want him out. But that's because I hate him. Anyway, other games worth noting. Okay, so the other game I think that's worth noting, the Jaguars, Bill. Wow. I mean, at, the, at first you think, oh, they just kept punishing them over the course of the game. No. The Colts had a lead at them in halftime, and the crowd was booing Jacksonville. And what do they do? From their point on, it starts with like a pick six that Hasselback throws. And it just kept throwing, they just kept scoring a touchdown. They kept scoring points each and every time they had the ball. And I'm like, yep. and people are saying, this is the team that they've been hoping for. And that worries me, because I don't want this to happen, but it, it, it will. But it's just, their de it's the matter of their defense needs to get better. And they need, to, and Blake Bortles needs to not, you know, throw those picks that cost him the game. Yeah, Bortles, Bortles, if he develops... He is going, he's developing, he's, he's a slower version of Derek Carr. We will compare him to Ben, which, if he has explosive enough talent, you very well could make that comparison. I mean, he's, he's a slower developing version of Derek Carr, Ben Roethlisberger, big guy, big bodied guy. Definitely, if he can cut down on the interceptions and cut down on the turnovers, and the Jaguars' defense steps up because their offense is there. They have good wide receivers in Hearns and Robinson. They have a good young running back in T.J. Yeldon. They have Denard Robinson. He's actually hurt right now, so yeah. he might miss Yeldon's, a couple of games. Yeldon's hurt. Uh, uh, Denard you know, will be starting in his place. He had a few hundred-yard games last year at running back. So... They have the talent on the offensive side. They need to build the talent on the defensive side. But that 51-point bomb they they put on the Colts, that is what I think the Colts are going to be expecting the rest of the season. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll put it, Here's an interesting thing. That was the first time in Jacksonville history that they've ever put, a fif, put up 50 points on the board. It's it, Which is, it's it's the well, history was made there for a young franchise, granted, but I yeah, mean, I'm I'm a little I'm a little worried for them. Wait, hold on, hold on a second. All right, sorry about that. Anyway, continue, Bill. Their late '90s teams were really good, Jacksonville. So that that's saying something that they beat any record from those. Um, late 90s Jaguars teams. Yeah. Oh my god. Okay, you know, I'll be back again. Okay, we're back. And there are... Okay, first off, there is also a shutout. We've had another shutout. The The Panthers just pretty much summarize where the Falcons have been all seat after their 5-0 start. Have you, have you ever seen this happen before, Bill, where a team goes up high and then just drops almost every game? It it's probably happened. I don't remember the last time it's happened, but it, it it hasn't happened in a in the recent memory. And this isn't due to injury, like how remember the Cardinals would have would have probably have been in the Super Bowl had they not lost Carson Palmer for the year. They just that's that, I, that's related I, to injury, and you can't fault them for that. I just feel like the Falcons outperformed uh, where they should be. You know. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so the Panthers very well going six. Oh my god, not again. Okay, I'm back. Hopefully, I'm not going to be bothered again. Any more times that I'm going to snap. Seattle punished the Ravens. Why do they even start Clawson? It, it honestly <laughs> doesn't matter who you start. 
it just give up on the season. I know they don't deserve this many losses, but just it doesn't. Why even bother? Why even bother? <laughs> if, <laughs> they might as well just play the funeral dirge before that. You know, it just. Uh. <laughs> yeah. This season is over. Yes. It is but over. but Seattle is proving to be the biggest bird. Well, they're not even close to the biggest bird. That's still the Cardinals. But <laughs> Seattle is making is just becoming an offensive juggernaut. Yeah, but here's the problem. They lost Thomas Rawls for the season who is shaping up to be like the next Arian Foster in terms of being the undrafted running back who just tears it up for a few years. Which, he got injured already, that's not a good sign, especially if, given the comparison. Yep. <laughs> but, okay, last game I want to talk about. Bill, the game that you, me, and maybe one other person picked right. The Raiders against the Broncos. Yep. They And that's because, here's the crazy part, it was like 9 nothing at the half. And the Raiders, or the Broncos had over 200 yards of offense done, but the Raiders had only minus 12. They owed yards. And how do you come back to win from that? You don't. Yeah. You just don't. <laughs> I don't, I don't know, but yeah, but somehow it did, because guess what happened? Khalil Mack has, has emerged to become a pro, uh, a, a pro defensive player, like he should be. Five sacks, a franchise record in a single game. He already has more sacks than J.J. Watt, and honestly, if Watt's arm still becomes a, uh, an issue, he is very well not going to reach his goal, which he was on pace right. for. But, my God. that And also, let's not forget, Khalil Mack actually caused a safety. He strip-sacked um, Brock Osweiler, which, led to a, which was a fumble, obviously, but recovered by a Bronco, which was a safety. Wow. And can we just, what? And can we just say once and for all, Brock Osweiler is not better than Peyton Manning, period. I'm amazed you're, you're a, a Peyton loyalist, despite, um, despite not even caring about the Colts or the Broncos at all. I, I don't know, I just find that <laughs> I, ironic. I, I, I'm just... I'm I'm a fan of greatness, and when fans and teams treat great players like Manning, who obviously are very loyal to the organizations that they go to, like Dirt, uh, obviously I'm going to support Manning over anyone else because Osweiler, while he might be an okay quarterback, he's big. He's clunky and he can't run. Yeah, but here, what I'm hoping for is they start him for one game, so he gets the most wins of all time. Exactly. Because he already got the yards, he just needs the wins, which I really would have loved if he got that against the Colts. That would have made me very happy. Just it would have been perfect for him to just to to get the ultimate vengeance on his team, to beat his former team, but also break that record. Just like these, this would have been for you guys. But you get you kicked me out. Yep. So that's just oh god. But yeah, who who knows? But the Raiders they came back because here's the thing: Brock Osweiler didn't get them touchdowns. He only got them field goals, four field goals to be exact. It it, it looks like a defensive slugfest, but yeah, at least Derek Carr drove them down the field to get touchdowns, and that was all they needed: one touchdown, safety, and a field goal. Uh, granted, they tried to get the two-point conversion because their long snapper got hurt. Which I don't even know how it happened. I don't know if it happened before the game or during the game. I don't know. But, um, right. so, yeah, who knows? Maybe the the Raiders are going to follow the Steelers' footsteps and always go for two. Which, right. honestly, if they really want to encourage teams going for two, I say if you're going to move the... Um, if you're going to move the, t the, um, the extra point thing for to make a 33-yard uh, kick attempt, how about you move it from the two-yard line to the one-yard line for two-point conversions? That way, teams are encouraged to either run the ball and try to get in, or throw it. Because most of the time, they throw it. But I would like right. to see more teams try to run the ball into the into the end zone for a two-point conversion. Because getting that one yard is, is still pretty harsh. Right. What do you think about that possible rule? Because it's being I mean, suggested. I mean... 
I don't really care. I I still don't think any teams on be really going crazy for two point conversion. Except for Pittsburgh. I mean, and and nearly bit it nearly bit Pittsburgh in the ass already of numerous times. I mean, honestly, I I, t- I think it's just bad coaching from what's his name Tomlin. Um, yeah, Mike Tomlin. Se- I, yeah, he makes really stupid choices sometimes. Not you just, not uh, Chuck Pagano though. Nothing will ever beat him. You just you just take the sure point. You don't take what what is basically a 50-50 shot if you're going to get it or not. You know, 90% of the time you're going to be able to kick the extra point. You know, that's that's one point. You never know when you're going to win by one point. Yeah, but um, what was I going to say? Uh, yeah, so the Raiders, Bill. I don't. They are out. I. They are not winning the playoffs. I think they're mathematically still in it, but they're not in. They're done. I think. But they're done. you know what? From here, from my playoff predictions, they are going to be according. My predicted record for them will be. Let's see, where are they? Eight and eight. From like what? Three and thirteen to eight and eight. Not bad. And yeah, not bad. They just. Mine. They need help on the line, and someone to replace Charles Woodson. I have them at seven and nine. Yeah, uh, let's see. I so that means you have them losing to either the Chargers, the Packers, or the Chiefs. I have, I have them losing pride to the Packers and Chiefs. Oh wow, Bill! Then we have a different pick already, which we're not getting to yet. We're gonna talk playoff predicting now. All right, Bill. Uh, let's start. Let I think you should start, or do you want me to start with okay. mine? All right, so we I'm going to start with the first seed in the AFC, and that is going to be the New England Patriots at 14 and 2. They're going to win their next three. All right, and then my number 2 seed, and this is going to shock a lot of people because they're going to rely on their running game and their two good running backs, Giovanni Bernard and Jeremy Hill. The Cincinnati Bengals will win all three of their games with their backup quarterback. Oh, boy, he's going to get paid. Oh, man. Next up, the three seed is going to be the Denver Broncos. I thought you would have picked the Chiefs, but do you think they've just won too many games to not clinch a division? I, I think they've won too many games. And who was it thanks to? And that was uh, Peyton Manning. Who's not, he's just... Wow, he's being robbed so much. They, it's, they, it's sad. Guess what? They were six and zero with Peyton Manning. Where are they right now? Four and three with Brock Osweiler. Next up, in the fourth seed, I have the Houston Texans at nine and seven. All right. So now here comes the other ones, the wild cards. This the is where things get interesting. Card. First wild card, which wins all three of their games. The Kansas City Chiefs at eleven and five. All right. Meaning it would be a Houston Texans Kansas City Chiefs matchup. All right. And then the sixth seed, because they got the beast at wide receiver. They have Big Ben. The Pittsburgh Steelers at ten and six. Yeah. So basically, the Jets this would have will have a similar record. I think uh, they would be. No, they're actually. Go- I have them going. In- no, yeah, they have them going a different record. They're not going to win I most have, of the games. I have the Jets going ten and six. I have yeah, them going. Well. Let's see who. Where do I have them going? Oh, I have them going eight and eight apparently, because they're going to lose to the Patriots and then lose to the Bills. They're out because of uh, tiebreakers and oh, etc. Yeah, it's sad. But hey, the Jets have turned it around with Fitzpatrick no less, which. He's gonna get. A, he's gonna probably get a nice two-year contract because he's old. Yep. All right. All right. Next. So here's your AFC. All right. You want me to hear mine, or you're gonna? I thought you were gonna go yeah. NFC. Oh, I'll do the NFC. Go for it. My number one seed, at a perfect sixteen and zero, the Carolina Panthers. Oh boy. The number two seed. Who also win out their next three games? The Arizona Cardinals at fourteen and two. Here comes what every Green Bay 
fan longs to hear. The Minnesota Vikings are the third seed. <laughs> what? <laughs> yes, the Vikings win all three of their next games and take the third seed. Wow, so basically the Packers will lose to every one of their division rivals at Lambeau. That truly spells for a bad season for them. <laughs> Which even going ten and six to making the playoffs or nine and seven, it's like oh, this is unacceptable. It's unacceptable. I'll be sure to put that air, I'll be sure to put that ego raptor clip of him saying that. <laughs> anyway, your fourth the seed, this one. <laughs> the four seed, who I wish would have went six and ten, but is going to go eight and eight. The Washington Football Team. Oh wow. Will Win the division somehow. Oh my God, Bill! I don't know how it, it's going to be that way either. And guess who gets to play the Washington Football Team and will lose to the Washington Football Team? The in fifth Washington. seed. The fifth, the seed. fifth seed. The Green Bay Packers. Wow. Oh. Oh, the Packers. I think we were going to say Seattle. The Green Bay Packers will lose to the Washington football team. Oh, I get in why. Washington. I get why. It's because the Packers beat the Seahawks earlier, so they get a tiebreaker and they're the fifth yep. seed. Okay, and I understand now. The number six seed is the Seattle Seahawks at uh, freaking 10 and 6. They're going back to Minnesota just to shit stomp them again. Yep. All right, Bill. Now it's time for for mine. So let's recap. Recap all of yours again. Okay. One, Patriots. Two, Bengals. Three, Broncos. Four, Texans. Five, Chiefs. Six, Steelers. On the NFC side, the Panthers won. Number two, Cardinals. Number three, the Minnesota Vikings. Number four, the Washington Redskins. Hey. Washington football team. We'll fix that in post. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in uh, the five, s s five slot, uh, the Green Bay Packers and the six slot, the CL Seahawks. All right, Bill. So here's mine. In the AFC, the Patriots going in 14-2 and again, clinching home field advantage. No, the second seed will be the Denver Broncos at 12 and 4, but they will be led by Peyton Manning. Oh man! It's because of their next. It's because their next game they're gonna drop it to the to the Steelers, and I just spoiled the pick of mine. Number oh, three, the Bengals, who are gonna drop most of their games. Honestly, wow! It's just it's not even their fault this time. I would not fault anyone for this because you can't you can't excuse yourself for injuries like this. But number four, Houston, because someone has to win this division. They're gonna. Oh, I never said their records. Bengals go in at eleven and five. Broncos go at twelve and four, and the Texans are coming in at nine and seven, winning out their last three division games. At number five, the Kansas City Chiefs, because they hold the tiebreaker over the sixth team, at eleven and five, winning out all their games as well. Number six is Pittsburgh, also at eleven and five. Gonna go play their the Bengals, another AFC North matchup. All right, so let's go to the NFC. Number one is they're perfect, the Panthers. How can they lose any other game? I would love to see them lose a game, but it just isn't happening. Uh, number two, the Cardinals at fourteen and two. Honestly, they are my dark horse of this one, and I have them going to the to the Super Bowl as the NFC team. At number three, I have the Packers. Bill, I know you don't like it. They're going in at ten and six. NFC is clearly the weaker division, if you don't mind me being honest here. <laughs> um, at number four, I really hate this, but this is according to the playoff predictor. I honestly had the Giants going in, but apparently. It's going to be the Washington football team, but I'll make it clear, I could very well see the Giants going in, but I swear I better not see them win against the... Oh, the Washington goes in at 8-8, eight and eight, but anyway, um, they can. I better not lose... better not beat this team. Seattle Seahawks, fifth seed, 10-6. and six. 
they are going to punish whichever NFC East team they have to play. And rightfully so. At number six, the Minnesota Vikings. Because they, it, they've won too many at this point to not make it in. Right. Anyway, so yeah, to recap, AFC side, one Patriots, two Broncos, three Bengals, four Texans, five Chiefs, six Steelers. NFC side, one Panthers, two Cardinals, three Packers, four Washington football team, five Seahawks, six Vikings. Yep. Uh, our lists are similar, but they're they are placed differently. Primarily yep. in the third seed and the wild cards, I've noticed. Second and third, if you count AFC. But the NFC is pretty much the way it is, almost. But the yep. AFC is the only one that looks to be the most flexible, in my opinion. But anyway, Bill, are you ready for the picks? Are you ready for some picks? Yes! Oh my god! We're and here we go! This game's about to start, so we have to pick already. Bill, are you changing your pick, or are you keeping it as it is? I am going Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I am going St. Louis Rams. The to Todd Gurley hype train does not stop. I, I think the Buccaneers are a more complete team right now. Uh, the Rams are still decimated by injury. That's true, but honestly, I have to go Todd Gurley. I think he'll, I yep. think he'll carry, he'll I mean, carry everyone on his back for at least one more week. They need one more game to win, and I think they have it. Well, actually, they have two because they play the the San Francisco 49ers, who are also one of the worst teams in the league. All right, Bill, let's talk about a game that takes place in a day that we usually don't have these types of games in. And that is Saturday. Saturday night football. Jets play against the Dallas Cowboys. Oh, this is sad. I have the Jets winning. Though, I'll be honest, I could very well see them dropping a game. But I have the Jets winning, regardless. Actually, I, yeah, I, had, the, I had their record wrong. They're going in it. They would tie. They go 9-7. and seven. My bad. Oh, yeah. I also have the Jets winning. Uh, Brandon Marshall... I, I think is going to have a big game. I honestly, just everyone's going to say Peterson's comeback player of the year, but I'll be honest, I'd rather it be Brandon Marshall. Because yep. I think we all had him out like no chance because, you know, the Jets didn't have a good quarterback. But, you know, him and Eric Decker are a nice combo. But, yeah, that's my candidate if I had to put a comeback player of the year. But, yeah, can I pick? Can I predict you the score, Bill? What? 9-3. to three. And I'm talking a touchdown and a safety, not field goals only. Wow. It's an ugly game. Ugh. Ooh. Okay. So, uh, now we're on to the normal slate of games. Sunday, the Carolina Panthers at the New York Giants. Oh, this is... Honestly, the Giants are the last hope if anyone doesn't want the Panthers to go undefeated. But it won't matter. Josh Norman will, will cover... Um, Odell Beckham. Odell Beckham will be frustrated. He'll punch a water cooler and then punch a coordinator and get fined. I have the Panthers punishing the Giants. And I'm talking 30-7 to 7 because, my God, the Panthers' offense has clicked. And they have never been better. Panthers' offense is clicking. Their defense is nasty. The Panthers will win. Damn right. Next up. The Tennessee Titans at the New England Patriots. Oh, come on. This is embarrassing. Why even? <laughs> Don't even air this in Tennessee because everyone's going to be upset. I have the Patriots shutting out the Titans. Their defense is playing for real. I expect their rookie to get a sack, Malcolm Brown, and Rob Ninkovich getting a, a strip sack. It's going to be beautiful. Please start I, uh... any Patriot player you have on your fantasy team. You need them. <laughs> they're going to have a ball. I have Gronkowski scoring two touchdowns. I have Amendola scoring two touchdowns. And why not have two touchdowns for Brandon Bolden as well? It's going to be a blowout. The Patriots will win. Mm -hmm. Next up, the Buffalo Bills at the Washington football team. I have Buffalo winning this. LaShawn McCoy, he played great. He played his part, but Tyrod Taylor could not finish it up for them, throwing really bad throws that could have been catched by his players. But I have Buffalo rebounding. Even though they're out of the playoffs, they can at least try to get a winning season to give themselves hope. 
I also got the Buffalo Bills winning. I think Tyrod Taylor's going to run the football in two times. Wow, nice. All right, so next up, <laughs> the Kansas City Chiefs at the Baltimore Ravens. I have the Chiefs. Wow, I have Travis Kelsey and Jeremy Macklin getting t to a touchdown apiece. Oh, boy. Ravens, I'm sorry. I don't like you, but I did not wish this much suffering upon you. I would never wish this much on you. <laughs> Here comes a blowout! The Kansas City Chiefs will have three touchdowns by wide, re wide receivers. They will blow out the Ravens. No more game. talk of can wide receivers even get touchdowns in with the Chief in Kansas City? Yes, exactly. they can. Next up, the Houston Texans at the Indianapolis Colts. This is a big one. And you think, oh, Brian Hoyer's not starting. They'd have no chance. Did you forget TJ Yates had to go up against a good Jets defense and Hopkins put a clown suit on freaking Darrell Revis? I have the Texans beating the Colts, Matt Hasselback, or even if Andrew Luck comes back, which I don't even know if he's going to play. In fact, I should check on that right now, but in the meanwhile, I have the Texans winning with DeAndre Hopkins getting a touchdown. And let me get one thing clear. The chance of J.J. Watt getting a touchdown now is gone because of his arm. Had he not... He would have got one in the final game, but yeah, I'm just saying that right now. Texans win this game and pretty much have the division clinched as long as they win one other division game. They've got have, this. And I have the Texans in a blowout over the uh, you Colts. Know, do you know why? TJ Yates knows. Throw the ball to Hopkins. You exactly. give it to your best. You feed your best player and you win. That's what the Rams did against the Lions last week. That's what pretty much the Giants did for their player for their game last week. That's what you do. You give him the ball, and then in return, it makes your other players great. Exactly. All right. So next up, the Atlanta Falcons at the Jacksonville Jaguars. I have the Jaguars actually just. This is going to be a shootout, actually. I think the Atlanta offense will awaken, but it's their defense that will kill them. I have the Jaguars winning in a 43-30 to shootout. Oh, man. And I've got the Falcons also winning in a shootout. It's going to be like a 45-42 game. Oh, boy. Next one. Next up, the Chicago Bears at the Minnesota Vikings. I have the Vikings winning this one. It's going to be closer than you think. But I'm calling a 14 to 10 game for 14 10 win for the Vikings. I also got the Vikings. Next up, the Green Bay Packers at the Oakland Raiders. All right, Bill, I want to hear your pick first. Okay. I as much as it pains me to say this, I've got the Green Bay Packers winning. I just, I don't see how Aaron Rodgers is going to lose to the Oakland Raiders. I have the Raiders actually consuming the Packers in the black hole. Bill, oh, I know you don't think it'll happen, but you know your own advice, your own criticism of the Packers will be their undoing. Their defense only does not show up. They pretty much some are like the Bills' defense. Shows up when it wants to, and they will not show up. Because the Packers, their run game will be stuffed, and they will be exposed. Charles Woodson will get a pick six from Aaron Rodgers. Oh, yeah. So next game. The Cleveland Browns at the Seattle Seahawks. Oh boy, I I I want Manziel to take this one, but they won't. They they won't. <laughs> I I have the um I have the Seahawks just pummeling the Browns. And this is, I agree. This is a Seahawks blowout. Oh, all Next right, Bill. Up, the Cincinnati Bengals at. San Francisco 49ers. I uh, okay. Here's one that I think is a coin flip game. To be honest, Blaine Gabbert's playing okay, 
and however the Bengals are the most talented team it depends does the talent of the Bengals carry or does Blaine Gabbard actually have a really good game I'm going to go with the um I'm going to go with the ba- with the the 49ers but that's just cuz I think they're I think they're ripe to steal one more game this will be the last game they win by the way <laughs> I've got the Bengals beating the 49ers I think they're done with lean heavily on Jeremy Hill and Giovanni Bernard and they still have a good defense through the Bengals so that's that's the deciding factor. Yeah. Next up so the, Wait, you, you said the Bengals, right? Yep. Yeah, like that's fair. This is a this is a coin flip game. Next up, the Miami Dolphins at the San Diego Chargers. Um I have I have the um let me see. I honestly don't know. <laughs> this game is just... I'm going to pick the Dolphins, but I can very well see the Chargers taking it. This is also a coin flip game, just on how bad this is. Oh, man. This this game is going to have the most points scored combined between the two teams. I think both teams will score in the 50s against each other. But I have the Dolphins somehow eking out of victory 55-52. No defense! Ugh. Alright, Bill, next game. The Denver Broncos at the Pittsburgh Steelers. I have the Steelers just playing lights out. This game will be about, I don't know, a 35-10 to 10 game? Mm. Some ugly numbers like that. What do you think? I have a 13-10 to 10 game and the Broncos winning because of their defense. Oh, that's fair. It's this is a case of the un, the the unstoppable force versus the immovable object. Which in this case, I have to go with the uh, unstoppable force. Speaking of unstoppable forces, the Sunday night game, the Arizona Cardinals at the Philadelphia Eagles. I'm telling you. Steelers Broncos would have been a better game. Granted, they at least got the one after this. They switched the they flexed the Steelers Ravens game for the uh, Giants Vikings game, which good. That's a good pick. That's what I wanted them to do. But this one, Al and Chris, stop loving the NFC East. They suck this year. You should have picked the one I just suggested. I have the Cardinals blowing out the Eagles. This is actually. Uh, does this not remind you of the NFC title game when the Cardinals went to the Super Bowl? Yes, it does, as the Cardinals will pummel the the Eagles. I'm talking not a shutout, but Sam Bradford's worst game by far. Oh, this this is an absolute blowout by the Cardinals. The Cardinals are going to launch a red wave of an attack on, on these poor defenseless Eagles. These poor defenseless bald Eagles. <laughs> Endangered once again. Exactly. All right, Next Bill. Up. The, the Monday night game, I don't get why it's a Monday night game, but it's the Detroit Lions at the New Orleans Saints. Their last primetime game, they don't even deserve it, but I have the Lions winning this one because the Saints have no defense. This is a game I expect the Saints to lay an egg on. It seems something they could very much win, too, but no. I have a feeling the Saints will drop it. I have the Lions winning. And after the Rams game... I have sold on the Lions again, and I'm picking against them with the hope that they will win. So I'm picking New Orleans. <laughs> of course you are. But, Bill, now we have two more games because the last Thursday and Saturday night oh, games of the season. Oh, shit. Where are they? I, I closed it out. Uh, do you want me to do it for you, Bill? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thursday night football, the last one but the best for a Raiders fan as the black hole is visited by the Chargers. Oh man. What do you Guess got, Bill? What? The Oakland Raiders are going to consume the San Diego Chargers. I also have the Raiders. I think Derek Carr will have his best performance by all means. Start him. It's going to be all, it it's going to be dark. You won't even see anything cuz everyone's going to be wearing all black, I'd hope. <laughs> the black hole, just no, just, wow. I actually, I have uh, Amari Cooper getting a touchdown in this game. But anyway, Saturday Night Football, 
Uh, it is the Washington football team against the Philadelphia Eagles. Guess what? Washington football team wins! Oh boy. I also have the Washington football team. I see the Eagles bombing like I've said they would. They were supposed to bomb all these games. Granted, they beat the Patriots, but I think they have to make up for that by losing a clearly winnable game. Washington, and actually, Deshaun Jackson's going to get a touchdown to get, to win this game against his former team and give a fuck you to Chip Kelly, who is likely going to lose his job. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, Bill, that'll do, because now we're done with those, but... We're getting close to the end of the season. Only two more weeks after this week's games. I it's crazy to think. Yeah, it go it goes through so fast. But anyway, that'll do it for this week. We will see you guys in week 16.